Hello everyone, this is Steve Sun. Um, I'm with Cal Williamson Consini. This week's show is a little bit special. It's going to be a live presentation that I gave to a big group of audience um, which, who are highly educated and experienced healthcare professionals. But the reason is because I was very honored to be invited by University of California Berkeley School of Public Health, COEH, which stands for Center for Occupational and Environmental Health, to present my master thesis, which we ended up publishing a paper in May 2017, which was a case control study that I conducted with my thesis advisor, Professor Dr. Susan Gabrick, and senior research fellow, Andrew Ryan. Also, many thanks to my advisor, Professor Dr. Lisa Peterson, and our, and our division head, Do Professor Dr. Bruce Alexander, who served on my committee. I really, really appreciate all of the guidance, mentorship, and help along the way. Without all of your support, none of this will be ever even be possible. And I really, really miss all of those days up in Minnesota. With that said, let's dive into the presentation. Ask that we can get started with this next presentation, and then afterwards you guys will have a break. Um, so, our, our next presentation. Thank you guys, great. Um, our next presenter is Steve Sun. Um, he joins us, he had earned his bachelor's degree from Anun Medical University in China in 2012, and his two master degrees, an MS in Environmental Health, and the other in Computer Science in 2014 from the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. His advisor for environmental health science was Dr. Susan Geberich. Mr. Sun published the research, the relationship between shift work and violence against nurses, a case control study in May, 2017. Steve has been working in the Bay Area since graduation as a software engineer and is currently employed at Square in San Francisco. Thanks for joining us, Steve. It's a major public health problem, including physical assault, PA, and non-physical violence, MPV. Uh, Dr. Harrison uh, just went through that. It's uh, the second leading cause of occupational fatality in 2012. And in 2014, it became uh, the third leading cause, only after transportation-related cause and fall-related. And I checked the data from Bureau of Labor Statistics again in 2016. Uh, work-related violence became the second leading cause of occupational fatality again. Um, and also based on National Crime Victimization Survey, over 572,000 non-fatal violent crimes, including rape, robbery, or assault, occurred against people at work or on duty in 2009 alone. Although much information about work-related homicides is there, Research on non-fatal violence and risk factors is very limited, especially it's very limited for shift work, uh, which uh, we, we dove deep in and did the data analysis. From a publication published by NIOSH 2002, they found that hospital and healthcare workers are at increased risk for violence, especially non-fatal violence. And by a former uh, paper published by my advisor, um, Dr. Gabrick, um, violence, they, they found that violence against nurses is particularly a major occupational health problem, as Dr. Harrison just went through. Nurses are at very high risk of, of uh, violence. So exploring and understanding factors that put employees at risk for violence is a critical step toward the development of effective interventions. That's why we conducted a, a data analysis prior to that we collected data from nurses. Um, how do, we, uh, how do we analyze the data, or, or collect the data first? 
First, we define physical assault as being hit, slapped, kicked, pushed, choked, grabbed, sexually assaulted, or otherwise subject to physical contact intended to injure or harm. And violence was work-related was work related if it occurred in the work environment or during any activities associated with the job, including travel. This definition is consistent with the one used by NIOSH. What was our study population? Um, all of the registered nurses, RNs, and licensed practical nurses, LPN, working in the state of Minnesota at the time we collected our data was our study population. And thanks to the licensing requirements of both RNs and LPNs who practiced it, who practiced in the state, uh, they had an established database which provides demographic information and their home addresses through which we sent out direct mail to, co to collect data. And we included all of the nurses who reported working in the state of Minnesota during the 12 month period prior to survey completion. How do we design our study? We break the study into two phases and we send out questionnaire and analyze data for both phases. For phase one, we estimate the frequency and consequences of work-related violence to identify potential risk factors. And we'll go through the data in the later slide. Um, for phase two, we used a case control approach to investigate the possible association between exposures and physical assault, which is the outcome. And the phase two data provided um, the basis for the present study and investigation, and which is how the whole of my paper. Um, after getting approval from our, from our university institutional review board, a total of 6,300 nurses were sampled um, from a total population of nearly 80,000 uh, nurses. Um, almost three quarters of them are RNs and the remaining quarter is LPNs, licensed in the state of Minnesota. The state database included name, type, license type, address, birthday, sex, and year of first last session, which gives us a lot of convenience in data collection phase. Um, how, do we how did we contact the nurses? We sent, um, we sent out up to four direct mails in order to maximize response rate for both study phases. In the direct mail, we included a specially designed and pre-tested survey instruments that are inviting participation that provided informed consent and also posted paid return envelope. For phase one questionnaire, we mailed a sample of 6,300 nurses to determine employment status and the incidence and consequences of work-related violence. And we got a very high response rate, which is 78%. Mm -hmm. um, and for phase two questionnaire, from the responses, we asked 475 cases who were, um, who were asked about exposures experienced during the month prior to their assault month. And on the uh, one to three uh, ratio. So we pick the 475 times three is 1425. Uh, on the one to three ratio, we picked uh, this number of controls um, because um, if you ask why we pick uh, one to three, because in, in statistics, if we increase the number of controls more than one to cases, it gains a more statistical power. But if you include two more, going to dim, 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 diminish the power. Uh, so all of these controls randomly assign exposure months during period in which nurse work, but before any reported physical assault occurred to that nurse. So this selection process helped ensure the dis uh, distribution of months work among nurses and controls was very well represented by the distribution of selected exposure months. It's a little bit confusing, but <laughs> um, we can discuss more at, at the end. I'll, I'll have more slides to hopefully help cover that. Um, how do we analyze the data? So our goal was trying to identify the possible association between shift work and physical assault against nurses in Minnesota and controlling for important confounding okay. factors. I'm not sure everybody understands confounding factors. So confounding factors basically means if I'm trying to understand if there's a causal relation between A and B, um, B is the outcome and A is the, the factor that's playing an effect on this. However, C and D, they are also having an effect on B. So C and D, we call them confounding factors. Okay, <laughs> I see confusing features. Let's dive into the table, then you'll understand. <laughs> 
So we categorized shifted work into two uh, refined categories. One is shifted type, the other is shifted length. And for shifted type, we further categorize them into day, evening, night, day and evening, day and night. And for shifted length, we categorize them into less than or exactly equal to eight hours. Uh, second one is 10 hours. Third one is greater than or equal to 12 hours. Um, based on prior hypothesis, a DAC uh, of a directed acyclic graph, which I'm going to show in, in just a second, was constructed to represent the causal relation between shift to type, shift to land, physical assault, and other variables including the, included in the data collection instrument. And we used the principles described by former researchers. This DAG was used to determine which variables should be included as possible confounders by examining the role, the role of shift work. Okay, a more confusing slide coming. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is the DAG. Uh, which stands for directed acyclic graph. So there are a lot, a lot of boxes on this uh, graph. So let's focus just on two boxes at the moment. Uh, first, let's focus on the one in the bottom, which has words in blue, which is work-related violence. That is the outcome that, uh, that our study was trying to understand. And the other box, which is uh, the one in the middle with uh, red words, is shift type slash shift length. So these two, we were trying to use the data, we were trying to understand if there is a causal relation, any association between our main exposure of interest, which is the red box, and our outcome, which is work-related violence. And all of the other boxes in, in just in black, they could be confounding factors, or they could be just variables that are factored in this setting. So if we look at all of the all of the boxes that have an arrow going into the red box. Think about that. <laughs> Does that make sense? So if we look at all of them, there are actually eight boxes who have an arrow pointing into the red box. We have to exclude them because they are the so-called confounding factors because they have an impact to the outcome, which is the work-related violence, through our main exposure of interest, which is shift type shift length. We would like to understand the only, the only um, association between shift and type shift length and work-related violence. So we had to, during our data analysis, we had to uh, block all of the backdoor paths so that we can understand. So basically, cut all of these eight arrows off. For example, patient population uh, working who shift the type work work-related uh, work violence or doctors also going directly and department facility. Uh, gender, age, lesson type, et cetera. Uh, well, well, we'll come back again. <laughs> and all of the set, com the set of confounders I just mentioned, the, uh, they're the minimum required to block all of the backdoor paths, potentially confounding factors, which includes uh, facility in which they work, primary patient population, uh, primary professional activity, license type, age, gender, and total years as nurse. Uh, the reason we do this is we try to avoid um, any bias by excluding these variables in the causal pathway between shift of work and physical assault. Uh, in phase one, we calculated the descriptive frequencies for the main exposure of interest and other variables among consistent controls. And then we used multivariate logistic regression models to, to determine the statistical association between shift of work and physical assault. Uh, what that means is multivariate, uh, basically multiple variables, multiple variables, because all of the variables in the previous DAC I just showed, they are all variables in this setting. So uh, with that, and then after excluding all of the confounding factors, we used the univariate. The univariate, this, var this variable of course is just shift to time. Um, we used the univariate model to demonstrate differences in the effect size, um, odds ratio when potential confounders were not included. Um, all of the statistical analysis were performed using SAS 9.2. Results. Uh, what did we find? From the respondents to phase two case control questionnaire, only those cases that involve patient or high initiative work related, work -related assault were included since they comprised the majority of physical assault, over 96%. And uh, some of the characteristics of 
standard participants, which, which we will see in the next slide, um, table one. You see, majority of them were women, and uh, year is average age is 46 years old with a standard deviation of 10.1. Three quarters are registered nurses, and uh, the remaining quarter is LPNs, which we'll see here in table one. Uh, table one is we after we collect all of the data, uh, collecting all of the data, and then we started to analyze. This is the final result. Shift type, as I just mentioned, we categorize them into three or four, and then for shift type, we have all of these. Uh, the second, uh, the, the columns on the right, they are places. First is absolute number, second is the percentage. So it's for controls. Uh, the numbers, uh, don't worry about them now, which I'm going to show in a later slide when we do the conclusion. So license type, health facility, all of these are very important when we reach the conclusion. Um, so from the data analysis, we found that um, shift and length, they are kind of similar. We didn't find a statistical, uh, statistically significant relationship between work-related violence and shift length. However, for shift type, we found that cases are more likely to work on evening shift, night shift, and day and night rotations. Sorry, the third type I should have corrected. So day and evening rotations, not day and night. So you see, uh, which you can collect in your slides if you print it out. Uh, which I'm going to explain in my, in my table. Um, cases compared to controls, more frequently they work in long-term care assistive care departments. So let's come back to this table. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse. So uh, long-term care on this table is the last third row of this slide, which is long-term assisted care, if you can see it. Long-term assisted care. And for uh, these two columns are for cases. So you see for cases, this percentage is over, it's exactly 40%. But for controls, it's, it's way less, it's 15%. And then another one is, they, they worked with the geriatric primary patient population. Let's see the number again. So here, geriatric primary patient population, that's the, this row, geriatric patient population for cases over 46% for controls that's less than half, 20%, right? Um, and the, whether they provided any patient care. Um, we also did a sub-analysis of cases and control combined. We found differences in frequencies of environmental factors and patient characteristics, which I think Dr. Harrison covered also. Um, so nurses working evening and night shifts compared to day shifts, they are more likely to report dim or softer lighting than bright lighting. Um, and also nurses working evening and night shift, this is a typo, to my second typo, sorry, only for those of you. <laughs> uh, nurses working evening and uh, evening and night shifts compared to day shift reported higher per percentages, over 75% um, of impaired patients, whether they are under influence of disease, prescribed uh, medication, alcohol, or other drugs. And then we try to understand the estimate of the risks, use both unadjusted and adjusted multivariate model. Um, although effect sizes were smaller, in adjusted versus unadjusted models, shift, uh, the, the effect of shift type remains statistically significant in both models. Fine, let's see. Okay, uh, so, what I uh, meant, um, I just said that, so here, for let's go through shift type first. Shift type, we use day shift as the baseline, uh, which is one, and for OR, which stands for odds ratio, and 95% CI stands for 95% confidence interval. So we found that for, so remember, I just said uh, one of our conclusions is that for evening, night, and day, and these three, for day and evening shifts, we found that nurses working at these shifts are at increased risk of work-related violence. How did we reach that con conclusion? Is because we did the data analysis, we found that the odds ratio, if this one is the baseline, we found that all of these shifts, 
are significantly higher than the baseline. That's what it means. And for 95, uh, in order to reach that conclusion, not only the odds ratio, but also the 95% confidence interval, the, at least, and at a minimum, the lower limit of the 95% confidence interval has to be greater than the baseline. So you see, for all of these three shifts, the lower limit of the 95% confidence interval is also greater than one. This is for unadjusted model. Uh, for adjusted model, okay, what, what does unadjusted and adjusted mean? Basically, it goes back to the confounding factors. If we exclude all of the confounding factors, that means we adjusted the model. So basically, excluding all of the other factors, which also have that e e um, effect on the outcome. So that is what it means by adjusted model. So um, common sense tells us that uh, adjusted model is going to be smaller in size. So you see, uh, for evening shift is 1.55, and for night shift is three uh, instead of five because we excluded the other effects, the other factors. But still, um, for adjusted uh, for adjusted model, all of the lower limit of these three type of shifts are still higher than one. That's why we reached the conclusion. However, for day and night shifts, the odds ratio is smaller, but the upper limit of 95% confidence is higher, so we cannot draw the, draw the conclusion that day and night shift is a protective factor. That's not the case. Uh, for following the same reasoning, we, we found that shift length didn't really have a statistically significant uh, association because you see of either odds ratio or the lower limit of 95% confidence interval is smaller than one, which is, which is the baseline. Um, discussion. Um, so the, we included the discussion in our paper, find that uh, the purpose to, uh, our purpose was to understand the effect of shift on the outcome of physical assault among nurses through a comprehensive uh, analysis, which was not uh, conducted previously on this database. Uh, we did the data analysis through multiple logistic uh, uh, aggression. We found that increased risks of work-related violence um, for working evening, night, and rotating, and day and evening shifts. Um, this, uh, this finding uh, lines up with another uh, paper published by another researcher. And also, we found the increased risk Saw might be explained in part by the factor of lighting, the environmental setting. Uh, the risk of salt among nurses working in environments that were not fully illuminated were, were higher than those working in brighter settings. Um, in addition, the finding of higher percentages of impaired patients cared for on these ships are suggested. And the relation between impairment and assault was also recently reported by the Um, then we sat down and thought about what are the potential weaknesses of our study. We found, uh, we, we found one could be the way we collected our data because it, it was based on self-report. However, we tried to minimize the, this bias by limiting recall of violent events in the phase one data factors in the previous months only and the recall of exposures in the second phase to a one month period only. This is comparable to approaches used by other researchers. In addition to that, we contacted the nurses if necessary to clarify any ambiguous or missing information for the purpose of further minimizing information bias. Uh, the conclusion, uh, which I think I had gone through, which is uh, we found increased risk with workplace assaults um, for the nurses working these three shifts, working evening, night, and rotating day and evening shifts. Uh, based on prior analysis from this major case control study, we found the reasons could include inadequate lighting um, and also patient impairment. All of these uh, then support to the conclusion of types of shifts do play a significant role in work-related violence, and these findings will, of course, serve as a basis for further investigation and the development of effective methods.
question is that we look at staffing on night shift and evening shift. I believe I did. I have to look at our questionnaire again. We, uh, there were 70 questions in phase one questionnaire, 40, 47 questions in second phase questionnaire. I don't recall exactly, but I think we should have. I can double look at the questionnaire and get back to you. Yeah, exactly. That's a great point. I'm totally with you. Yeah, usually we have reduced staff at hospitals in the evening, which gives either impaired or regular patients more chances to attack nurses. Yeah, that's true. Go ahead. with you. Uh, communication uh, between rotating shifts, right, is very critical to avoid like, potential violence. Thanks for bringing that point. So the next presentation is going to start at, I believe it's 1040.